Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I hit the button. It's definitely purchasing it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. I heard it. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is Thursday, October 27th at 7 p.m. Uh, we are here at Bell Creek Intermediate, and this is a meeting of the Bellbrook Sugar Creek Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business. It's not to be considered a public community meeting, but there is time for public participation during the meeting, as indicated in the agenda. <coughs> Mr. Liming, would you please call the roll? Mr. Carpenter? Here. Mrs. Dorn? Here. Mr. Kenzie? Present. And Mr. Price is absent. And Mrs. Anderson? Here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Right here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Mr. Wyoming, please give the treasurer's report. Okay. Uh, I'd like to request the establishment of student activity account number 2000. Uh, 9095 for Belbrook Middle School for establishment of a Hope Squad. Uh, effective for the 22 23 school year, there is a Hope Squad at the high school but not the middle school, and it's a request of the principal Jeff Eckler. All right, we have a motion. So moved. Mrs. Dorn. Second. Mr. Kinsey. Any questions or comments? All right, sounds great. Mr. Romani, please call the roll. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Storm? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, going on to correspondence, uh, did anyone have correspondence that they wanted to share with the rest of the board? Sure. I had a, I had a couple of notes with people asking some questions, and I was able to address those, but beyond that, I didn't have any. All right. Going on to, then to item number five, the Green County Career Center District Representative. Uh, we have uh, a resolution to appoint uh, Mr. Adam Renally as Melbourne Sugar Creek Local Schools representative to the Green County Career Center Joint Vocational School District. And I will read the resolution for a motion. Whereas Green County Career Center, the GCCC Joint Vocational School District, the JBSD, has a vacancy on its board, and whereas the Bellbrook Sugar Creek Local Schools is a member of GCCC, and is authorized by the GCC plan on file with the State Board of Education to, an appoint, to appoint an individual to fill the vacancy. Whereas the Bellbrook Sugar Creek Local Schools has reviewed the statutory requirements for making the appointment, including those in Ohio Revised Code 331, 3311.19 as amended, and its requirements that joint vocational school districts board members have experienced as chief executive officers chief financial officers, human resource managers, or other business, industry, or career counseling professionals who are qualified to discuss the labor needs of the region with respect to the regional economy and the requirement that the Joint Vocational School District board members represent employers in the region served by the GCCC and be qualified to consider the state's workforce needs with an understanding of the skills, training, and education needed for current and future employment opportunities in the state, and the requirement that the Joint Vocational School District board members have be selected based on the diversity of the employers in the territory served by the Career Center. And whereas the Bellbrookshire Creek Local Schools has performed and documented its due diligence in considering the appointee's qualifications, including the appointee's qualifications to meet the legal requirements to serve, and as whereas the Bellbrook Sugar Creek Local Schools is part is party to a mem memorandum of understanding which is attached with the Green County Career Center and the other school districts that make up the Joint Vocational School District. And this appointment is in keeping with the terms of that memorandum of understanding. <clears throat> now therefore, be it resolved that the Board of uh, Bellbrook Sugar Creek Local Schools appoints Adam Ramali to the Green County Career Center Joint Vocational School District Board of Education for a three-year term of office to commence on January 1st, 2023 and expire on December 31st, 2025. 
Do we have a motion? So moved. Mrs. Anderson? Second. Mr. Kinsey? Any questions, comments, corrections? Did I miss anything on that? All right. Mr. Lyman, please call the roll. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Motion passes. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So with, with that settled, we have reports to the board, and we have Mr. Riley here to represent the Green County Career Center. He has been serving in that role uh, currently, and so this is an extension of that term. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you to the board for nominate, uh, nominating me, voting me, and thank you. I, I do enjoy it. It's an honor to serve and a privilege to be a part of that organization, so thank you very much. Uh, just briefly, on the 10th of October, Governor DeWine and his wife spent about an hour and a half over at the Career Center touring the drone facility, the robotics, the culinary arts. It was a you know, big deal when the government, governor and his wife comes through, so everyone was really excited about that. Um, there was a, uh, you may not be aware of this, one other, you know, from a staff perspective, um, the Xenia head football coach is Mo Harden, and they uh, finished an undefeated season. But from the Green County Career Center perspective, he's the exercise science instructor there. And he built the course from 12 students six years ago to standing room only. And I've witnessed Coach Harden, do, um, one of the things that he's really instituted there was he had the exercise science students uh, pair up with the special needs kids and develop exercise program for the special needs kids. <laughs> And it was interest, great to see the two groups of kids work together and build friendships, even you know during classes and you know in between classes and things like that. So it was he really is one of those people that is making people better. It's not just about the sports or it's not just about athletes. He is really doing a good job over there. Um, one other piece of business uh, that you guys will appreciate: uh, they did reach agreement with their classified employees, so they uh, signed a contract for three years. So they're going to be get done with negotiations. As I'm sure you guys have. Always, always had fun with negotiations. Um, uh, Bellbrook students are well represented out there. It's, it's a beautiful facility. I urge you all to get out there if you haven't been out there before. But, and you can take a tour anytime you like. Uh, it's, it's, it's doing some, a lot of good things for the community. Uh, are there any questions? All right. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have Bell Creek Intermediate, what's new at BCI? And we have the principal, Donna Phelps. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. We're happy to have you guys back here at BCI, albeit uh, not the December meeting. So um, I guess we could have put on a Halloween pageant so that we're Christmas pageant. But anyway. Uh, we thought that after uh, last year being quite a banner year and coming into this year, that uh, the thing to do was to share with you all of the new things that are happening here that we're so proud of um, because I can't say it enough, we have amazing students and, and an amazing staff that makes all of these things happen for our 8 to 11 year olds here at Bellbrook. So we are definitely uh, better today than yesterday and even better than last year. So comparing uh, 2021 at this time to now, it's like night and day in so many ways. For one thing, you know, last year we were the hotbed <laughs> right off the bat of uh, COVID infection in the district. And so we are spending virtually no time managing um, illness and, uh, and and that sort of stuff. And uh, scrambling for substitute teachers is not really a thing anymore. And the copious amounts of time with contact tracing and managing health measures is no longer an issue for us. Um, and I'm not subbing as much in classrooms. So uh, that's that's uh, a blessing and a curse. It was really great to to get in as a former high school and middle school teacher to to see what life is like in a uh, third, fourth, and fifth grade classroom. It was awesome, and to get to know the kids in that way. But it also took me away from the principal work. Um, I think we counted like 26 days or occurrences last year. So that's you know almost an eighth of the school year. So we're we're doing much better staffing our schools this year, which is great. Uh, we've got lots of improvements in infrastructure, scheduling, and our service delivery models, which are huge. Um, 
it's much more conducive to meeting our goals as a building in a district with the new start and end times. We're able to have our eight to 11 year olds on their own buses. Um, and we don't have students out walking or biking in the dark, which I think is huge for safety. Um, we're also able to begin each day with um, a scheduled collaboration time for our teachers and staff, um, which is huge in their uh, ability to uh, meet as teams, to analyze data, collaborate on planning, and select targeted interventions or enrichment for students as well as for our shared leadership teams to meet in the building for some of the bigger goals for our building and district. Um, we've uh, also developed the most deliberate and intentional academic class schedule I think that the building has ever seen since it opened as a three to five school in 2007. The classes have been scheduled with students needs in mind to uh, enable a maximization and a synergy of our human resources to get people in the right places to best support students and maximize their learning. Um, with our uh, physical space becoming an increasingly hot commodity here, we've been able to add a ninth teacher to, um, I'm getting a little behind myself here, to each grade level to overall lower our class sizes. The average class size this year is 24.6 compared to last year's 27.3. So that's really great. Um, our and, and that's all across the board. I believe we have no classes over 25. Um, so that was uh, that was a great thing that you guys did for us by allowing us to to add staff to the building. Um, our new staff members have also been great additions. I've been hearing some really great things about our new folks and their experiences and the wealth of knowledge and expertise that they're bringing to further all the great work that we're doing for our kids and district. Uh, with all of these infrastructural and personnel changes, we've also been able to change some physical spaces and get some new furniture. Uh, the five most senior teachers in the building um, received new student desks, new chairs, standing desks, small group tables. Um, I think that was a first for this building. Um, we've also revamped our former staff dining area, which I think you guys are going to get to utilize uh, later for executive session um, to make it a laboratory space. And we've cleared out storage spaces to make them functional real estate in the building. Uh, we've converted the workrooms then to double as staff lounges. They're complete now with Google Cast screens, whiteboards, new furniture for those regular team meetings that are happening in the mornings. Uh, a space also uh, for the teachers to work in one day each week during their planning periods because our digital literacy uh, instructor has to push into their classrooms because we have no remaining classroom space for her to have her own room. Yeah. Um, so really to sum it up, we have moved some small mountains and it couldn't have been done without all of the staff pitching in um, and, and purging and cleaning and organizing, some of them even painting. Um, and our amazing team of custodians, I can't thank those three guys enough. They are the best in the business. They work tire tirelessly and they take so much pride in our school's aesthetics and keeping a 1960s facility um, really looking great <coughs> and safe for all. Um, so we have truly, um, as it were, dressed ourselves for success by creating systems because I think that we have come to a shared belief that one does not rise to the level of one's goals, but rather we fall to the level of our systems and we needed some better systems here. Um, so what's new for this year? Um, reinstated and reinvigorated special area classes. We've got art um, back after a hiatus as well as uh, digital literacy. Um, after those years of financial strife, we've revived the art room and uh, we've, we've recruited an amazingly talented teacher who has so many creative and content rich projects planned for our students and, and that is to benefit our K-5 to students because um, art and STEM between here and Stephen Bell. So that's a K-5 to program. Uh, digital literacy, we're fortunate enough to have digital literacy instructors now in both buildings. Much needed course. Um, for our K-5 students, especially here with 3-5 to five and state testing because our kids are digital natives, but they don't really speak the native language very fluently. <laughs> We're finding out. So from their keyboarding skills to digital citizenship, online researching, the use of productivity apps, and so much more, Mrs. Barlow has got so many personalized and meaningful units planned to enhance our students' one-to-one -one technology experience in um, all academic areas overall. Um, 
what else do we have going on? Lots of stuff. This is our uh, LIM Center. So that stands for Literacy and Mathematics and Science. So this is our laboratory space that was the staff dining area. We have a shared philosophy here that uh, how important literacy is for all other and lifelong learning. One of the big changes in our students' educational journeys here at Bell Creek is that third grade is essentially where learning to read starts to stop and fourth and fifth grade is where reading to learn begins. So while promoting reading and writing across curriculum is a main goal, we were also desperately in need of a multi-purpose lab space due to the size of the classrooms that are rooted in 1960s architectural standards. So this room will comfortably seat 35 students at lab tables. It's equipped with a Chromecast screen, whiteboard, lots of functional math and science decor, a sink and counter for lab work, and we have organized and stored every bit of science equipment that we had all over the building and math manipulatives as well. Everything that we can find, it's all there for communal use. Um, we've also been able to revive our student council that has been, um, was, was a stipend position that was uh, cut several years ago and has been brought back. And uh, one of our new staff members, Mrs. Martin, who teaches fourth grade, has brought a wealth of expertise to leading this group. They've already done some exciting things for the school community. Chief among those would be the recent uh, popcorn sale fundraiser that will benefit the Pink Ribbon Girls Organization. And they plan to present that check to a representative um, very soon. They've also had a big hand in something else that's new this year, which is um, our WBCI video announcements that we do morning announcements. Mrs. Barlow is helping with that. It's been a really big hit so far. Not only do the kids broadcast uh, the important information that everybody needs every day, like what's for lunch, what specials rotation are we on, birthdays and that sort of thing, but this has also been a great avenue to get important information out um, and, and things like you know trends of undesirable behaviors that come through the principal's office. So they've been able to come up with fun and creative ways to address those and student friendly ways to remind students of what our behavioral expectations are in uh, all areas of school. <coughs> so uh, another great thing is we have breakfast every morning for everyone. Um, Mrs. Malice is very excited about the breakfast program and she picked up some stats that she thought that uh, I should share with you. The goal of providing this breakfast program at BCI is to provide nutritious meals so that our students can always be at their best. Um, so basically meeting basic needs before we get to academics. Since the start of the breakfast program, we have been averaging 133 breakfasts per day. The demographics of students who are getting breakfast is equitable for all of our Bell Creek student populations. And none of this would have been possible without all the help and hard work and leadership um, from Jennifer Hain, um, who is our nutrition services manager through Sodexo, and of course, Anastasia Shoup, who manages our uh, BCI kitchen here. So it has been very successful. Mrs. Hain says that it's truly taken a village to get the program up and running. She said it's been a great experience working with the staff and absolute joy to provide the service. Very thankful for such great caring people who are looking out for the best needs of kids. Um, we have our new uh, SOAR PBIS tenants this year. Um, so the PBIS program is a you know, state mandate. Every school in Ohio has to have one that stands for positive behavior intervention and supports. And so we uh, had to revamp ours from our R2P2 program to fit into the framework of the rest of the district in focus three. So our beliefs, behaviors, and outcomes are that golden eagles do the right thing, soar together and pursue excellence. And since soaring together is kind of a metaphor and pursuing excellence might be a little ambiguous or tough for our um, third through fifth graders to understand, we took SOAR as a, a building team and we broke it down into an acronym to highlight our desired behaviors and safety always, ownership, acceptance and respect for others and responsibility. So these are behaviors that we model, that we teach, we reward the desired behaviors using the PBAS rewards web-based program <coughs> where students earn points and then later um, shop in classroom and school stores to redeem them. Um, another awesome thing um, that's probably, if you remember, we have a reading garden outside that was more like a reading jungle <laughs> for some time. Um, Mrs. Libby Stanton, who's a retired Bell Creek teacher, was the founder of that, who you know, was a very big proponent in outdoor education projects and things for our gifted students. Also wanted to be able to constantly keep books in kids' hands, so there's the book box out there to borrow books. But it needed a little facelift. So um, 
a, a junior student who was actually a former student of mine from the high school, Mateo Kravitsky, uh, approached me about an Eagle project, a Eagle Scout project. And over a year's time, with some support and, and also seeking support from the community, um, he was able to basically recreate our reading garden. And I think the results speak for themselves. Um, also, we have more instruments in Mrs. Wolbaum's music classes. Uh, that was able to be accessed through uh, PTO direct donation campaign funds. So we're excited about that. Um, something else that's brand new is win time that we're doing in uh, grades K to five. That stands for what I need. Um, so it's not uh, a, a total distant cousin from just good old fashioned differentiated instruction. We're just now getting a soft start with this in second quarter um, with two days each week. Uh, other schools that do programs like this, it's typically an everyday thing, but we're kind of easing our way into it. We've got a staff book study going on with our building leadership team and our teaching and learning team here in the building as well as some other staff. So we're looking forward to learning more about that and, and figuring out what that model really looks like for intervention and enrichment and doing some more intensive things in second semester. Um, we also, and I know this has been featured in the bridge over the summer, but um, the teachers are very excited about our BCI books program that go along with our morning meeting and SEL learning. So uh, I have here with me this evening, uh, Debbie Bobick, a fifth grade teacher, and Shelly Smith, who would like to share a few words about that. If you don't mind, ladies. They're very excited about it, so. <laughs> Debbie's losing her voice, so. I'm just trying out a new voice. <laughs> wow. The state of Ohio would suck, you know, your sinuses here. <laughs> um, so it really, it started off with a conversation in the hallway with Miss Sizemore and myself, and I'm not really sure how it started there. Um, but I said, I'll go off and figure out what kind of picture books. We want to build community, because I remember going to school we had artwork all over in our elementary building. Um, so I thought, well, who else can I go to for picture books? So I ended up going to Mrs. <laughs> Smith's room, talked to her about it. She was really excited. Uh, went up to the office and thought, you know, let me talk to Mr. Phelps, see if he's on board with this. Told him what we wanted to do, build community. And as typical fashion, he goes over to his bookshelf and he hands me a book called All Are Welcome. So that became our first book that we did. By the time I got back down the hallway, Mrs. Smith had already come out of her classroom with a whole bunch of books and said, look at all that we can do. <laughs> so I will let her share what some of the books we did in the art room. Yeah, we're still in the process of getting this off the ground, but I was fortunate enough to check my email and see that PTO was wanting to give away money. And I said, I would love to take some of your money. Let's buy some books. Yeah. So there is an author named Peter H. Reynolds who writes some amazing books about kids being themselves and being accepting and encouraging. So I said, Scholastic has a six pack that we can get and we could buy them for all the teachers in the building. And PTO was kind enough to do that. So we are in the process of using these books in September, we did The Dot, which is basically a kid in the book says he can't do art. And the teacher says, make a dot on the paper and see where that takes you. Uh, the BU book is just about being yourself. And these books are fantastic, not only for kids, but for adults as well. Then, the last one, most recently, I read The Kids Ish, mm -hmm. and we talked about how there are different things. Maybe you're not feeling all the way there, but you can be kind-ish, or thankful-ish, or encouraging-ish in your own ways. So the next one I'm really excited about is The Word Collector, where we are going to do, I think, six word memoirs, where the kids are going to come up with basically six words to describe themselves. So we're in the process of working on that for future book club activities. But it's just been a great thing to build community at Bell Creek where all the grade levels are involved. And I just love seeing all of them work together. There's a third book with Dot and Ish, isn't there? We have Sky Color. Yeah. 
and the dot and ish and say something, which is another good one. Okay. So. These are the six that came in the pack from Scholastic. Sure. So. so the most recent one we did was, I can't remember what it was called, what was the, best part of me. the best part of me. And so the kids all had a picture, it had to do with character traits, um, and they brought in a picture of themselves um, doing their character trait, and then they wrote about what was the best part of them and learning more about character traits. And those are the pictures that you see up in the hallway um, now. Right. So, thank you. Shout out to PTO. Thank you. Yes, indeed. So, obviously, we have just phenomenal people <laughs> who dig in, do hard work, do what's right for kids, and work tire tirelessly to do that for us. And uh, that's just a sampling. We have a whole staff full of people just like them. Um, and the great thing about all of this is that it is rooted in literacy. It directly mirrors what they're doing in language arts classes, character traits. This is just the, the reverse engineering of it. You know, when they have to pull, pull apart literature and, and make inferences about who the characters in the books are and find the evidence to support that, well, they're just doing it the other way around. They're picking out traits about themselves and providing reasoning for why that's their trait. So it really all just ties together and keeps that forward momentum of our bigger goals. Uh, so where are we going from here? Better tomorrow than today. Here's what we're looking at for the remainder of the year. I can't believe we're already like, coming up on November. So number one, most important thing always is safety because if we, we, we're not safe physically, socially, emotionally, um, mentally, we're not, uh, we're not able to achieve any of our other bigger goals, emotional regulation, fulfillment, belonging, and value for all of our stakeholders. But then beyond that, getting into customized learning. What does that look like? Uh, we've got lots of data gathered now. Um, so we're gap closing. We're using some great new resources that are available from the state of Ohio to help us prepare for our state testing um, that just came out last year, I believe was the first year. It's the first time in my teaching career that the state really provided anything solid to help us prepare for those tests. So we're excited about that and the data uh, and the common assessments that we'll have there that will guide instruction and collaboration. That includes what we do for intervention or enrichment as the cases may be to improve progress and growth from year to year for our kids. And we've got all sorts of great programs that are afforded to us, um, Exact Path, IXL, Reflex Math, the Wind Time, just to name a few, I'm sure. And those of you with kids in the district are familiar with those. And just more critical thinking, more problem-based learning, more skills application. We've definitely created an infrastructure and physical spaces to do that. And we're fortunate that we can be more than six feet apart, <laughs> or more, more than six feet together, right? Yeah. So we can, can do that stuff now. Um, and student-led goal setting and progress monitoring, we really feel like that's a big part that students have a hand in knowing where they are and where they want to go and how they're going to get there. So Mrs. Barlow, because she's amazing and she can do everything, uh, she was able to um, get this from the kids' voices, um, you know, all these new things and what they think about it. So here's a little sampling. Um, I. This is way beyond my technical expertise or ability, so kudos to her for putting this together. Much appreciated, but you can hear straight from, from the kids and see a day in the life of Bell Creek. Thank you. Can I do that? Oh, let's do it. Oh, there we go. Oh, 
Good morning, DCI. These are your morning announcements. Today's weather is sunny with a high of 72 degrees. Special today is yellow day. Um, today's lunch is cheeseburger, crispy chicken salad, PB and J, and cheese pizza. Today is our last day for Shoes for the Shoeless donations. And today is our last day of Pink Week. Don't forget, Student Council will be selling popcorn at lunch today for $1. <laughs> Check out the newest marine space at BCI, but what are you seeing in math and science center? Breaking news. There's a mad scientist in our building in the new science lab. What? Who knew? I know, right? Trevor, have you seen him? No. This is crazy. You gotta check out the new science lab and be at the lookout for the new mad scientist. It's crazy. <laughs> Yay! Digital Literacy and Auto are back at BCI. In Digital Literacy, students make digital posters with info on how to be a good digital citizen. In Art, students created the All About Me hand print project. Introducing the newest segment to our morning announcements, BCI Book Commercials. At BCI Book Commercials, you can look forward to BCI students giving a book review on a book that they recently finished and they highly recommend other students give a try to. Stay tuned, coming up next, our very first BCI book commercial. I'm Lynn Roberts. And I'm Lee. We're third graders and we're here to tell you all, all about one of our favorite book series, Investigators, by John Patrick Green. This sixth book series is about two crocodiles who are trying to stop the indigenous crocodile. Hey, Doug, we are Freddy Graft Donalds, and this is Series for you. Be sure to check them out for Mrs. Campson next time this year, Crossroom Library Day. You'll be enjoying the investigators as much as we do. Bye. Yo! BCI Breakfast is here! Who's excited about breakfast at BCI? I am. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so exciting. Breakfast at BCI. If you get to school in the morning and you and your grown-ups have decided that breakfast is for you, then you can head to the cafeteria. If you're running late on time and you're going to be late with that 9 o'clock bell, grab your breakfast and take it to class with you. What? Breakfast on the go? That's right. This breakfast is designed to be able to take it and go to class. So enjoy that breakfast, but it's your responsibility, BCI, to be in class by 9 o'clock. Started by our wonderful BCI teachers, BCI Books provides lessons and art activities to accompany a chosen book to celebrate reading and wellness school-wide. Bellbrook PE teachers, Mrs. Taylor at BCI and Mrs. Rose at BHS have their second annual Bigs and Littles Pumpkin Dance. Mrs. Rose's high school dance class with 9th, 10th, and 11th grade students designed the whole dance by choreographing moves to chosen music 
and then visiting and teaching the steps to Mrs. Taylor's fifth grade PE classes. They taught Mrs. Thompson and Ms. Hope's home rooms. Both the high school students and the fifth grade students enjoyed this project and learned creative movement patterns from this experience, which is one of our Ohio physical education standards. Good job, guys! Everybody from the classrooms to our custodians, office staff, nurses, counselors, PTO, parent volunteers, bus drivers, cafeteria workers, everybody really comes together here and works in the best interest of kids. And I couldn't be prouder to serve as the lead learner of the school and, and help coordinate all that. Um, and, you know, as you can see, it, it's a joy to work with 8 to 11 year olds every day and separate from all of the, the adult doodah that's happening in the world and focus on you know what really matters. And, um, and we just have a great time here and we have come so far in just a year and I think uh, the future looks even brighter. So um, we get so much support. That $2,500-ish that was uh, raised for each building for the neon night, the plans are to um, improve our playground uh, in terms of uh, equipment, and uh, games and things like that. And, and we even have a third grade class that's working on a project-based learning project to uh, make the playground more inclusive and accessible for our friends who have mobility issues or um, other types of exceptionality. So anyway, thank you so much for having us. We, um, for having having us here at our site. But, um, anyway, it was a pleasure to present. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Have a great evening. I going to say thank you, Mr. Phelps, uh, for your leadership here and also it's obviously a team effort, um, so everybody working together. This is a lot of exciting stuff, and especially just look at the last two or three years of not so exciting stuff that it's really inspirational and just really positive, and that is just, that's what education is about, about positive and teamwork and everybody working together, so we really appreciate that. So thank you much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Nice to be back to the real business of education. Yes, definitely. Oh my! Uh, normally we would hear uh, from uh, Ms. Gann about the district report card. And unfortunately, she is not well, and we'll move that to next month. She's just sick today. 
She's sick today, yes. Yeah. yeah. Not well sounded like it was like more a, serious. Oh, serious. Sorry. She's oh, ill sorry. today. She's ill today. She's ill today. She's, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not well. <laughs> <laughs> Just today. Just today. <laughs> uh, this will go on to board committee reports. Uh, Mr. Kinsey, um, uh, anything for the legislative liaison spot? Yeah, I just have a few things that might be of interest. Um, yeah, just kind of picking and choosing a few things here and there, and also just being clear that anything I mentioned obviously is not an endorsement. Or, or against anything, just trying to provide some stuff that's kind of come across my desk a little bit. Um, first thing is that uh, a legislative committee to the State Board of Education unanimously passed a resolution, it wasn't that long ago, that they would recommend to the Ohio General Assembly, and then the assembly would choose to take action or not, uh, the repeal of the provision of the third grade reading guarantee law. Um, I went and read a little bit of pros and cons and different sides of that debate. Uh, but the thing that I wanted to mention is that um, I learned recently, and I mentioned when I was at Stephen Bell, and I want to not miss the opportunity to say it here at BCI also, that I learned just by attending one of the open houses that our district, Bellbrook Sugar Creek, has never once in the history of the, that third grade reading guarantee law has never once retained a student for that reason. So I just think that's fantastic. And, so well done, and thank you so much, everybody at Stephen Bell and BCI. I'm sure appreciate you. Uh, next thing, the Ohio General Assembly, the legislature has passed House Bill 110. Uh, a little bit of a gray area here, and I have a whole bunch of legalese that I can pass on if anybody wants to read it, uh, or in case anybody has some questions about this. But House Bill 110, it may restrict public schools' ability to fundraise through raffles, and there's some legalese about what is a raffle and what is not. Uh, apparently, this does not restrict anything that's like a booster club or a supporting organization. I'm guessing those are PTOs, something like that. Um, however, through through this, that it may restrict whether a school itself can fundraise through raffles. So if you have questions about that, I may be able to point you to some more information. Um, OSBA is in communication with policymakers about this, seeing if it was an oversight. If maybe it was, or if this is actually done on purpose um, so that future legislation can help clean this up. Um, but their recommendation for the time being is don't have the school do any raffles until this is more black and white. Um, uh, last, I have Senate Bill 361, which has only been introduced. Um, if passed, it would allow school districts to employ veterans of the armed forces to be employed as teachers without licenses. So Say that part again. Uh, the first part you said that if it would allow veterans of the armed forces, and it's my understanding, however, I went to look and to find out what these qualifications were and I could not find them, but some veterans with some backgrounds to be employed as teachers without their teaching license. I don't have a lot of detail on that one. Um, the raffle things, I oh, think I got the thing? same thing, and I think I heard from links. If that's only for if you bought a, raffles where you buy a ticket. So again, not yeah. raffles where you auction off whatever. Well, and, I, and I've got a whole bunch of stuff here, and again, I'm certainly not an expert, but I, I can point to more information. Uh, this says a raffle is defined in Ohio Revised Code 2915.01cc as a form of bingo in which one or more prizes are won by one or more persons who have purchased a raffle ticket. Purchase. Yeah, and there's, it, it goes on here, so. Okay. Ticket towers. Okay. <laughs> I, I just thought it was interesting. Uh, it probably yeah. doesn't affect uh, anything at all. But. Yeah. All right, that's all I have. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Doran from the BSEF and Financial Advisory. Um, nothing uh, recent from the Financial Advisory, but for BSEF, just held the Punch Over Fest um, mm -hmm. two weekends ago, oh, last weekend. Um, that went really well. We had a, a pretty good turnout. It was the first time in, I don't know, two or three years that there has been one of those. So I think a few, there are a few people who were confused on what to expect a little bit. So I think that's a, a function that is successful but probably needs to build over time again as people with kids in that age group. This was, for a lot of folks, this was their target. Like first exposure sure. to it, but it was a really good time. Um, lots of folks came out and volunteered. Uh, and then there's a BSCF meeting tomorrow morning where I think on the agenda will be um, 
taking a look at all the grant applications submitted by teachers. So that happens tomorrow. Nice. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Price isn't here, so we won't hear about the safety committee. But um, Mike, Mr. Kinsey, I'm sorry. Anything more from the ESC business advisory? Uh, a couple things. And this was the first time I attended that, so it was really neat to see. It was awesome to see all the different business partners, nonprofits, um, school personnel from, from the county coming together to talk about helping kids. It was fantastic to, to witness all this stuff. A couple takeaways that may be of interest to us or the community. Um, first is that if you're not familiar, there's a program, um, Dolly Parton's Imagination Library, mm -hmm. and I know it's for our younger kids here, but you know we have some preschoolers and whatnot, that if you have a child up until the age of five, if you register for this program, you get a free book every single month in the mail. Mm -hmm. And I know both our kids did it and they loved it, and they would run down to the mailbox every day checking to see if it was Miss Dolly book day. Mm -hmm. Um, but something I learned at that meeting was that you know, maybe we can help publicize that and get the information out, but uh, Green County Libraries are the model for the statewide program here in Ohio. So they're doing such a fantastic job uh, making awareness of that and getting people signed up that other libraries are copying them. So that's very neat. Uh, next thing that was interesting, um, highlighting a program um, called Disconnect to Connect. And this was a bunch of community partnerships that came together to collaborate with the ESC, and they put together a six-part series, um, a bunch of articles, highlighting alternatives that we can employ for kids, but also, frankly, for all of us. I think we can all fall into this, for the overuse or misuse of tech uh, in various environments. So increased time on screens is a problem. I know I catch myself, too, so it could be a problem for all of us. but. If you uh, would like some more information on the tips that they provide, um, you can, I know, find that through the Green County Public Health website and elsewhere. But it's called Disconnect to Connect. Good information out there. Uh, last thing, and this is really cool, there's a program called virtualjobshadow.com. Virtualjobshadow.com. Uh, and the ESC has purchased seats for all 7th and 8th grade students and teachers so that you can go in and really, it, it's what the URL says, it's a virtual virtual job shadow. So you can get a first-hand look at people in various careers, various jobs, talking about what they like, maybe what they don't like. Um, you get to see them do the work, uh, see them interact with their teammates, and it's just a really neat way to see if that might be something you're interested in pursuing further. Virtualjobshadow.com. All right. Thank you. And Dr. Kuzad, yeah. yes, sir, Grant, update. Yes. Um, this is the Safe Return to In-Person Instruction and Continuity of Service Plans. If that sounds like a federal title for you, it is. Um, but this is uh, the plan that every school district has to have in place in order to be eligible for ESSER funds. And so those ESSER funds have been going on for a while. We have some ESSER funds that are running through uh, the summer or so of 2024. So some of them are, are done at certain points in time. But this plan is on our website. It's updated every six or seven months or so. And so um, just to highlight a few of the things here, some of the stuff doesn't change, some of it does change. Just to highlight that we actually um, uh, did, uh, are using ESSER funds for, we were a little short on the number of bus drivers we had this, uh, this fall, um, as with probably many other school districts. So contracting out for an interim solution for that, uh, we were able to use our ESSER funds for that, so it wasn't any cost of the general fund. Um, some of those reduction of class sizes that Mr. Phelps was talking about um, here at BCI, but also at Stephen Bell Middle School, High School are being paid out of ESSER funds for this school year. Next year, uh, the two technology specialists, Ms. Barlow there, and then also um, Cairo, Ms. Cairo over at Stephen Bell. Um, but those, those positions are being funded out of ESSER funds. And then after the funding is done, those are uh, coming out of general funds. Um, and Mr. Wyming has accounted for that. Um, so also held a uh, summer, this past summer, held an intervention program for grades K to three, really probably the biggest um, 
intervention or summer school or summer help. Um, our students have had in quite a long time. So that was paid out of ESSER funds. Um, along with transportation this summer, that's something that we've never offered in the summer for summer school or summer camp, um, whatever you want to call it. So that's something we, we've never offered either in the past. Um, also, uh, hiring additional special needs aides have been paid out of um, ESSER funds. You know, as kids are transitioning over last year and this year back into the classroom from, from COVID and DOA and all those things, we had an uptick in some of our and students need some extra help and so forth. So we we're able to, to access our ESSER funds to be able to, to account for some of those things. Um, and really on the, the back of this page is just in, uh, percentages of all the money that we're spending for ESSER funds. So we have about $2.7 million total that we're spending or that we have for ESSER funds and about 43%. So almost half, not quite half, is for teaching staff. And so that's a reduction of those class sizes. Um, that really is the, the big piece of it. Behavioral support, their special needs age is about 29%, and then our transportation is 13%. So those are really our biggest expenses coming out of our, our ESSER funds. Again, every six or seven months or so, we'll update this, make any revisions, put additional information. Um, uh, this doesn't need to be, a board, be approved by the board, just an update to the board and the community. Again, we'll get this updated on the website um, as soon as possible. It needs to be on. Any questions or anything about this? No, great that it's out on the website for people to peruse at their leisure. Yeah. And again, I just, we are using our ESSER funds for our students. I mean, for teaching staff, for lowering those class sizes, for intervention, for supporting our students. It's really focused on those kind of things. So I think that's just really important to point out that we, we took a little time to get our plan together. We didn't start spending it right away. We wanted to calculate it with it, but we really wanted to, to get our most bang for our buck, and that's directly supporting our students. So. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Warren. We're going next to open communication. Uh, Mrs. Doran is getting a list to see if there's anybody signed up. And we don't we don't have anybody signed up. Okay. So going on uh, to the superintendent's report, we'll, we'll have our consent agenda items. Thank you very much. And uh, our consent agenda will include uh, 8A, Certified Licensed Staff Employment Resignation Leave of Absence and Supplemental Duty. And uh, Section B, Support Staff Employment Resignation Leave of Absence, except for item number two in uh, Section B, which is being withdrawn. So are, are there any items that a board member would like us to pull out of our consent agenda and address separately? All right, hearing none, do I have a motion to approve our consent agenda? I move. Mrs. Dorn? Second. Mrs. Anderson? Any questions or comments for our consent agenda items? All right, hearing none, Mr. Lyman, please call the roll. Mr. Kenzie? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Motion passes. So, Dr. Cruz, I'll go to you for our terms of information and discussion. Yeah, um, so board policy revisions. Um, this is our NEOLA policies, our board policies, and there's quite a few for the board to review. And these will be, this is our first read, so the second read will be on in November. And just to kind of to give people a, an overview of kind of our, our normal policy procedure. So twice a year, um, we get together, and Mrs. Dorn is, is with me during those meetings, and get together and talk about our, our board policy revisions with the NEOLA representative. And really, the board policies come out of either change in state law, change in federal law, federal regulations. And so all the things that you see, especially on, you know, not especially, but tonight, all those are, are 
or not because of something that's happening, but because uh, things are being updated, um, either state law, federal law, or federal regulations, and we want to make sure that we are following all of those particulars with our board policy. Any questions or comments from board members at this point? As you go through them, please make sure you reach out to Dr. Kozad with any questions or any anything that you see that needs an adjustment. Yep. This will be on the November 10th. Great. We do have our address correction in there too. So yep. that's, we do. that's great. We do. It's something that was mentioned last time. Yep. That is in there. All right. Uh, next, we'll uh, have a motion for executive session. I'd first like to read um, a statement here. For the record of tonight's meeting, because executive session is not recorded, board members, board member Kevin Price, while not in attendance at tonight's meeting or counting for the purpose of the quorum, he will listen in to executive session to keep up to speed with board discussions. So he will be on the phone to hear. So the motion I'd like to make is the board will meet in executive session for the purpose of preparing for negotiations with public employees concerning their compensation and other terms and conditions of their employment for revised code 121.22 paragraph G4. Do I have a second to my motion? Second. Mrs. Dorn. Mr. Lyman, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Motion passes, and I'd, I'd like to comment that we don't anticipate uh, any board action after the executive session. Thank you all, folks from BCI. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that very much.
bag in just two minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, it is, are we on? It is uh, 8, excuse me, 928, and we are out of executive session. We have no uh, resolutions or um, motions to make. So do we have a motion for adjournment? So no. Mrs. Dorn? Second. Mrs. Anderson? Please call the roll. Mr. Carpenter? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Motion passes. We are adjourned at 929. Thank you all very much.